Today on HVAC Shop Talk, I'm gonna be cleaning a package unit which is right behind me. It's an Amana 15 sear package unit I installed in 2014. We're gonna be cleaning the evaporator coil and the condenser coil. And I'm gonna show you guys a new method that I've come up with. We're gonna kind of test it here today to see if we can't take coil cleaning to the next level. Whenever you're gonna clean a coil, we're probably gonna dismantle part of the air conditioner and we're going to need to turn off the air conditioner to make sure there's no power. Now we have a heat kit breaker and an AC compressor breaker. I'm gonna turn both of those off. It's a 60 and a 30. And then we'll test and make sure they're turned off. This is an Amana APH 1530M41BA. It is a square style, not the coffin style. Electrical components are up here, blowers down here, condenser coil in the back. Kind of have to be careful for the drain connection. All right, so a little dirty bird down here, but we can trace this wiring and see if we have any voltage on it. And then after we're done with that, we can get cleaning our coils. We're gonna check the connections of the contactor and we're gonna check them at the top because that's where the field wiring comes in. And we're gonna check each side to ground. We have essentially zero volts. And then on the other side, we have zero volts as well. We'll check in between them. We have zero volts. And this is the contactor relay. We're checking alternating current. So we have no power there. Let's drop down into the heat compartment. We'll check power there as well on the other circuit. This compartment at the bottom is for the heat kit. These two knockouts are for breakers that are optional. And I have to find that screw now. Kind of a weird system they put in place here. So in the back we have some lugs there. It might be difficult for you guys to see. We're gonna check power right there. We're gonna check AC voltage to ground on both legs and we'll check them in between each other as well. I'll go ahead and hook it right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's see. We're ground. And then we have L1, in which we have no voltage there. We come back to the next one. We have no voltage there, and we have no voltage in between either one of the legs. So what we're gonna do is, since this compartment is open, I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum out this compartment as best I can with the shop vac. That way we can go ahead and clean it up, and then we can clean up the condenser compartment before we do the coil cleaner. Whenever you're vacuuming out these electrical compartments, just be careful with your vacuum because you don't want to do more damage than good by knocking something loose that you don't, you can't tell that's happening while you're vacuuming because you're trying to vigorously vacuum. You don't want to make any loose wire and it's going to burn up here later. Uh, but now that I'm done with that, I'm going to take top panel off of this machine and the side panels off and we're going to vacuum everywhere we need to. And then we could start the rinsing process and coil cleaning process. These panels all the time get hooked on the top of this coil. What we do is take off these side beams, these firms, and then we're able to lift up the top a little bit. See, it's a little bit tougher on the other side. There we go. When 
When getting down inside of the condenser opening, I use my big shop vac. I'm actually use this PVC pipe and kind of connect it to the end of the shop vac tubing so I can easily get into crevices without having to deal with a bunch of flexible hose. Some of you might see this as a redneck fix, and that's what it is. And if you spend some more time, you'd find a perfect fitting hose. But what I'm doing is just doing a temporary thing so I can vacuum down deep inside of the condenser. Good old duct tape. But I want it to be a little bit more rigid than that. So, just gonna put an old drill bit right here, just like a splint. I would suggest that you guys find a vacuum hose and piece of PVC that work well together and you can make a manifold or I'm sure there's probably an apparatus available on the market, but this will get me by for today. So let's dive in there deep and get all the junk out of there. Our first step once we're all cleaned out inside is just to rinse the coil off. And that's general rinse. This is a single row coil, so I'm not too worried about blowing it either way. I think we're going to be fine either way. We already got all the large particles off. So recently I purchased this two gallon sprayer that works with Ryobi products, Ryobi batteries, and I actually got this little pressure washer that's a low pressure pressure washer. And we're going to maybe try both of those out today. We're definitely going to try the sprayer. I'm going to fill it about half full. You can see there's two. There's one gallon right here. I'm gonna fill up to the one gallon mark, add a few ounces of coil cleaner, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. And then we'll uh, spray down this coil. Right about one gallon. What I have is I have this, these Viper packs, pure concentrate. It makes eight gallons of coil cleaner and it looks like, as far as the use, the cleaning type, if you have extreme cleaning, extreme duty, it says 12 ounces or one and a half cups. This is gonna be light duty, so four ounces. I'm just gonna pour just a tiny little bit in there. Uh, you wanna measure it out. I am not measuring it out this time because I'm just putting a very tiny amount. If you can imagine 12 ounces for the heavy duty stuff, that's a whole soda can's worth. That's a lot of coil cleaner. These Viper packs are made by Refrigeration Technologies. And this one is called, again, Maximum Strength, Brightener, and Cleaner. And it says Non-Acid High Foaming. So we're going to find out if that's the case. Let's get to put our battery right here. And then we're off and running. It doesn't look like we got a whole lot of foaming from the amount of coil cleaner I put in there, which wasn't a whole lot, which explains the lack of foaming. Maybe just a little tiny bit here, but we're about to wash it all out. We're gonna give it a couple minutes to do its job, and then we'll wash it all out, and then we'll move on to the evaporator coil. While we're waiting, I think I'll try out this pressure washer on those louver doors. All you need is a bucket of water, and you can drop this pressure washer in there, and it gets about Two, 300 psi of pressure which isn't a tremendous amount as far as pressure washers go but it might be enough to clean off these doors and do a lot of the tasks and not bend any fins while doing them
now that our coil cleaner has been sitting on there and I pressure washed these panels over here, let's go ahead and hose this thing off real good so none of that coil cleaner remains on there. Alright gentlemen, let me see if this Roby pressure washer will cause any damage to these fins just in a light testing. It does not look like it. it. Looks like it's going to be safe. It's kind of nice. All right, so I'm, while I'm waiting to wash or rinse that condenser out one more time, I'm going to switch these containers. I'm going to take off the sprayer from the condenser cleaner, and I'm going to seal that up. I think there's a stopper somewhere around here. I hope. I see there's a stopper on this one. And then uh, once I seal it up, I can go ahead and I can keep this in here for the next job because I have multiple tanks. I'm gonna put some evaporator cleaner in this container, which is maximum strength venom packed evaporator cleaner, non-rinsing enzyme technology. Same thing on the back. For extreme duty, 12 ounces. For light duty, four ounces. I'll just put like a few ounces in there and uh, we'll spray down the evaporator with this stuff. The evaporator access is on the opposite side as the electrical access. So we're gonna take these screws out at the bottom. This panel will slide out and the evaporator will cover pretty much the whole breadth of this hole compartment. As you can see we have a filter dryer up here at the top. We have the equalizing line for the TXV. I have put a freestat in when I installed the system so we have a freestat there. We have the thermostatic expansion valve and all the capillary tubing coming off of it. The evaporator goes all the way across here. This is a no rinse cleaner so I'll be able to spray it on and then just leave it there. Since this particular coil cleaner is no rinse, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the system on and the evaporator coil condensation will clean it off. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.